what's your answer? What's your answer? When we meet someone new, the first thing we do is we introduce ourselves. Imagine if you couldn't. How lonely would that be? I just introduced myself. Hi, my name is Kim. And then I asked what your name was. Now imagine a five-year-old boy who's just starting his first day of kindergarten and he's so excited about all of the new friends that he'll make, new things that he'll learn, only to discover when he arrives that he can't make any new friends. No one can tell him where the washroom is, no one can tell him when lunch is, and no one can even tell him what his teacher's name is. The few fundamental answers that we need and our ability to get these answers is easily taken for granted. This was my five-year-old son, Carter, when he started his first day of kindergarten. When Carter was three months old, he was diagnosed with a profound hearing loss. And we were told we had a choice. We could try hearing aids, although it was believed that they may not work due to the profound level of hearing loss. Or we could also try a cochlear implant. A cochlear implant is a medical device that provides a sense of sound by stimulating the auditory nerve directly. With cochlear implants, we were told that Carter might even learn to speak. And if we worked really hard, he could even be on par with his hearing pairs by the time he started school. The third option did not involve technology. It included sign language. But we were quickly told that we could not choose both technology and sign language. What do you do? Which one option do you choose? It was an enormous decision that weighed very heavy upon us. I was overwhelmed. How was I ever going to communicate with my son? I didn't know any deaf people. We started to spend a lot of time doing research, and we leaned towards the option that we as hearing parents received the most information on, and that was cochlear implants. It was an imaginable decision, but I had other plans. You see, I understood that my child was deaf, and at the end of the day, no technology is gonna change that. Technology is not a cure, it is only a tool, and technology can fail. In fact, Carter's cochlear implants can't be used in the bathtub, while wearing a helmet, or even at a water park, which is why I started to learn American Sign Language, also known as ASL, and teaching it to Carter when he was three months old. It was a decision that I made and I kept from medical professionals for two years. Around eight months of age, it was evident that Carter's motor skills were developmentally behind, and when he was 11 months old, we were told that he had cerebral palsy. I was very worried about his future, and I knew how important it was to have as much sensory stimulation as possible. Cochlear implants seemed to have been a good choice, as we didn't know if he'd even developed a dexterity design. However, I was still not going to give up on the possibility of him acquiring ASL. I didn't know what was going to happen in the future. But I did know that I wanted to make sure my son had every opportunity to meet his full potential. And for us, that meant cochlear implants with American Sign Language. One of the greatest and most exciting milestones in a hearing parent's life is that moment when you're waiting to hear your child's first words, mama, dad, dad. Of course, this wouldn't be the case for us but we longed for that first sign. About a week after Carter was diagnosed with a cerebral palsy, he said his first word, and he signed milk. And then two weeks later, he signed more. I was finally able to connect with my son and know what he was thinking, what he was learning, what he wanted and what he needed we were finally able to connect on an intellectual level because of American Sign Language. When a child approaches the start of school, it's a nervous time and a time that's apprehensive no matter the circumstances. 
We're concerned about class sizes, whether or not our child will like school, or how many friends they'll have. For virtually all parents, whether or not your child has a teacher is not one of those concerns. For parents of deaf children in Newfoundland and Labrador, it is. Carter was placed in a mainstream classroom with a teacher who, while tremendously qualified and motivated to teach, did not have the training or qualifications to teach deaf children. This situation set both his teacher and my son up for the assured failure that would punctuate his kindergarten year. In reality, Carter spent the bulk of his school day surrounded by his classmates and his teacher who were unable to communicate with him. Carter could communicate in ASL, but nobody else could. In kindergarten, Carter received an average of 13 minutes in a six-hour school day of teaching from a teacher of the deaf. 13 minutes to learn his language and his curriculum. While all the other children were being taught, my son sat in a classroom surrounded by his peers and feeling completely alone and discarded. Would you allow a child to sit in a classroom for six hours a day and only be taught 13 minutes? What makes a deaf child less valuable than a hearing child? In 2010, our local school for the deaf closed, and at that time a commitment was made that all future students would have the same resources and support in mainstream schools that they did at the school for the deaf. But this hasn't been happening. Our children have a right to their first language, ASL. They need to have teachers that are qualified to teach deaf children. They need to have native ASL role models in their schools in order to authentically learn their language. We know that language deprivation contributes to illiteracy and mental health issues later in life. At what point does a child get used to being ignored? At what point do you get used to ignoring a child? At what point does a child stop thinking it's their deafness and think it's me? I hope Carter doesn't think it's him. But the thought of that haunts me, that that may be his perception someday. There is absolutely no evidence of a negative impact of learning ASL and another language. In fact, Children who learn ASL and English together are using both sides of their brain to process language. This gives them two places to recall information from. From Dr. Claire Valton's work, we see that ASL allows us to have accommodations of wide range of learning styles that benefit both deaf and hearing children. The representation of information through seeing, hearing, and movement lead to more pathways created in the brain which develop stronger memory, which is why children who are deaf and hearing who learn ASL have bigger vocabularies and can learn new words easier. Over the last number of years, I've had an extreme amount of pleasure teaching sign language to babies, hearing babies and their families. Sign language is the only language that babies as young as four and a half, five months old can be taught to learn to communicate with, as their vocal cords, of course, are still being developed. I receive on a weekly basis emails and messages from parents who tell me how excited they are that their baby has just started to communicate with them, or how surprised they are that their baby has just started to sign and they only started classes a few weeks prior. One of the most recent stories I received from a mom was about her daughter who woke up one evening. She was crying and she was inconsolable. Her mother went to her to find out what was wrong. 
and her baby signed. She asked her mother for milk. The mother got her milk for her, and when she came back, she had her milk. And then she asked her mother for more. Her mother realized at that moment that they had been traveling all day and their routine was off. And she understood that her child had not eaten very much that day. She told me how grateful she was that her daughter had a way to tell her quickly what she needed and what was wrong. There is absolutely no evidence against using ASL in another language. It is time for hearing parents to be encouraged to not choose one option and to receive comprehensive information on all methods of communication. To understand that sign language does not hinder a spoken language. In fact, it will enhance it. When was the last time you may have looked at an elderly person, perhaps a parent, a grandparent, or a friend, and you notice a lost look on their face, or maybe they felt left out because of hearing loss? We have an aging population. What if sign language was second nature to all of us? A society that can sign is a necessity not a perk. Canada's accessibility laws must recognize sign language nationally. It would be fatal for our province and our country to not recognize the rights of a deaf child for their language acquisition and equitable education. The rights for only some are rights for none. Schools that can encourage their teachers to take on sign language in their classroom or introduce sign language as another language will rise above the rest and demonstrate the true meaning of equitability for deaf and hard of hearing. And this is not to call anyone out. It's to bring people in. As a mother of a deaf child, I know and I believe that change can happen and we can start today. Encourage and support your schools to introduce sign language and start teaching all children sign language. Learn sign language with a friend or with a child. It could categorically change your life or maybe a deaf person you might meet someday. We know sign language is powerful in a cognitive, literal sense. But what I also love about this language is how children have fun learning it and sometimes they feel they have a superpower. Who wouldn't love to be able to talk underwater, maybe through a window or with your mouth full? <laughs> I love that I have the ability to talk to my son anytime and anywhere. I never have to worry about whether the batteries die in his cochlear implants or if the implant fails or breaks. I can communicate with him as he gets a bath, as he goes swimming, and as he plays sledge hockey. Choosing our own path has opened more doors for us as a family and opportunities for Carter. And I know that I made a decision that professionals oppose, but I also know that had I not made this decision, my son and I would not have had our experiences and connection. It is my hope that someday soon we will all know a little sign language and a child can say, hi friend, let's play. Thank you.